Tonight, I can announce that over the next year, another 34,000 American troops will come home from Afghanistan. This drawdown will continue, and by the end of next year, our war in Afghanistan will be over. The presidential decree is the driving force for logisticians. The move is on. And that's a big mission. I mean, it'll be historic. I mean, we never did this before. It's a mission of retrograde, withdrawing the equipment of the U.S. military from Afghanistan. Units understand that we got to clear, we got to leave Afghanistan, and they're getting after their non-mission essential stuff right now. That's what Major General right Kurt Stein commands the 1st Theater Sustainment Command, charged with retrograde oversight. The mission, he says, is different. I can tell you, I grew up in Iraq. I mean, uh, I know how to do it out of Iraq. I was expert over there. I felt very good. We had great process and some procedures, but Afghanistan is so hard. Uh, but I feel so good about it because we got tremendous uh, people in the right place at the right time, and the processes and the procedures are in place. So I am confident that we're going to get our stuff out of here and get it back into the hands of our soldiers, airmen, Marines. Uh, that's our job, and we're going to do it and do it right. Doing it right is a logistical test. Unlike Iraq, this is an ongoing combat operation. Afghanistan is still a battle space. Operationally, first TSC answers to Army Central Command, which in turn looks to CENTCOM for strategic guidance. ISAF owns the theater, populated with NATO and coalition partners, also downsizing. The mission is influenced by political nuances and unforeseen demands caused by the environment. And then there's the budget. Big impact. And you know, our services want their equipment back now so we can use today's dollars to get it reset and refit and again back into the hands of our military. It sounds simple enough, but this is Afghanistan, where nothing is simple. It is very overwhelming. I mean, very complex. We can't drive it down MSR Tampa into Kuwait like we did out of Iraq. Everything that happened in Kuwait and Iraq has to happen physically here in Afghanistan. A very real obstacle in getting equipment out is the terrain. Afghanistan is landlocked, mountainous, and dangerous. Exit routes are either air, which is expensive, or by road. Right now, a lot of it's going out by air. It's called multimodal. Uh, it's going to countries like uh, Oman, Dubai, Jordan. Uh, but our goal is to be able to use the pack g lock move it by ground. Obviously, it's less expensive, quicker, uh, move it on a ship. I mean, uh, uh, that's, that's, our, that's our objective. pack g lock translates to ground lines of communication through Pakistan, roads that run from Afghanistan across the southern border and onto the seaports of Karachi. The pack g lock has a tenuous history and has only recently been reopened following a seven-month closure because of strategic differences. Currently, traffic is flowing, a transport reality Stein hopes will continue. I wish for the pack g lock to be open forever and ever and let us flow stuff through there continuously, routinely, uninterrupted. That's, that's, I think that's my biggest dream right now. Sustainment stock, right. the op project stock, as you mentioned, sir, right. those have been right. moved out. Feeding the dream is the ongoing operation at Bagram Airfield, one of two primary retrograde sites. Inside 60-foot warehouses, redistribution property accountability, or RPAT, is a 24-7 operation. The key word is accountability. The RPAT team handles all rolling stock, anything that moves, and other property book items, things typically associated with vehicles. Once here, it's stripped down, evaluated, and entered into a supported chain of custody that follows every piece that comes through. Each item is touched, identified, and coded, processed for eventual entry into the Army Reset Program for use by soldiers in the next fight. We have recovered 1.1 million pieces of final installation property we have bought back to record. We saved a lot of money for the taxpayers. That's what it's all about. The scope of the mission is huge. Literally tens of thousands of pieces of military hardware, all kinds of stuff, are earmarked to return. More than enough to fill more than 20,000 20-foot containers. That's just for now. There's a lot of stuff. That's exactly right. But Gail, you know, if you, if you, if you look at it uh, in perspective, if you look at six months ago, 
you know, there was a lot more stuff, right? There was a lot more stuff. And so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff, and we have a plan to get after it and get it back to where it needs to go. The work at Bagram and Kandahar down south is a team effort. From battle space owner to the 401st Army Field Support Brigade to individual augmentees, part of the CENTCOM material retrograde element, CMRE. Soldiers like Sergeant Eric Hill. Hill is part of an ammo abatement team. Every vehicle that comes into our pad is checked multiple times for any kind of ammo. One of every 10 vehicles will find either spent casings, a uh, few live rounds. The inspections are very thorough. Every crack, cable, and crevice is checked and rechecked again. Hill says it's like touching history. Because the, these vehicles are coming from outside the wire, so uh, we, we know that there's, there's stories attached to every piece of ammunition we find. Since last December, the ammo abatement team has scoured well over 2,300 vehicles like this MRAP. It's estimated 20,000 more will be stripped down and checked by the end of 2014. The volume of inventory being removed from Afghanistan is staggering, estimated at $36 billion. As combat outposts, forward operating bases, and even NATO installations are closed, restructured, turned over to Afghans, and soldiers redeploy, Fifth. the amount and degree of quantity is overwhelming. It is, after all, 11 plus years of war. The timetable says a thousand containers a month need to move out of Afghanistan. To expedite this, units are being asked to shed their non-essential gear, to clean out their battle space, to send it to a retro sort yard at Bagram or Kandahar. No questions asked. We've been busting our butts. We got about 300 done this month. And, uh, it's pretty intense. To be fair, the majority of containers that make it here are more organized and getting better every day. But either way, this is a very hands-on kind of work. Honestly, <laughs> it's a stressful job, but my job is to come down here and save the Army money. The soldiers hail from Fort Carson, the 247th Quartermaster Company, currently part of the 3,000 CMRE workforce. The containers, some 1,000 at the moment, are quite literally filled with stuff. Good stuff, dirty stuff. What the heck kind of stuff? The job at the retro sort yard is unloading and separating salvageable goods from trash. So since the first of March, we've been out here knocking these connexes out. Uh, God bless America. <laughs> this is a, a huge mission, and what you've seen here in the retro sort yard is the ability of our of our soldiers to to really take all this equipment in, all types of equipment, junk. Garbage, good stuff, bad stuff. Bring it in here, no questions asked. Units bring it in here, drop it off, no paperwork. Our CMRE element sorts through it, brings stuff to record, and gets the good stuff back to our Army. Retrograde also incorporates cleaning. If it's destined for the states, it travels through customs. Oh, man, you know, all that so we're looking for is like uh, the infestation, uh, kind of bugs, or the uh, dirt. The big stuff hits the wash racks. Anything less than large gets checked out here. We don't want any type of infection or anything that goes in, like any pinchable dirt. We don't want any of that stuff going back into the states. The end should be clean to where when it goes back to the states and it is unpacked, it is ready to be put back into the system. We have these air dryers. As long as they're sealed, air filters are good to go. No dirt, no nothing. We're able to put them in here. It's all part of a system guided by cost, keeping what can be reused, shedding what's no longer of value. This is where we get our money back, right here. Absolutely. Like lots of money. We get lots of money. Yes, absolutely. I think we're upwards of 100 million. It's a complex business in a complicated land. And while the retrograde is underway, it's a delicate balance. Afghanistan is still a battle space, and soldiers need to have the tools that they're going to fight with until they're gone. 
The fighting season is in its early stages. Afghans are taking the lead. But good strategy says our forces need to be equipped right up to the end. The challenge now is that our fighting units are still out there fighting. Again, a difference between Afghanistan and Iraq. We weren't fighting till the very end. We weren't providing the assistance that we're providing here in Afghanistan, in Iraq, like we are now. And so our units need that equipment. We can't take it out of their hands and expect them to, to, to do their mission. And so we gotta wait until those units actually off ramp uh, to get their equipment so we can get it back to the United States. In the meanwhile, Stein says they are adapting, looking for ways to lessen the overall volume and cost of materiel moved out of theater while also adjusting to unknowns that will undoubtedly determine the final outcome. What is known is the pace of retrograde will continue to ramp up as the final drawdown gets closer. And while some $36 billion of inventory will leave Afghanistan by the end of 2014, the price tag for what is being called one of the most challenging military transportation operations in history is currently set at six billion. What's also known is the retrograde process is evolving. The big push is yet to begin. But according to the first TSC commander, there is a known deadline and logisticians are confident that it can be met. We got tremendous uh, people in the right place at the right time and the processes and the procedures are in place. So I think we're okay.